Remember that time Disney was going to add another mountain to Magic Kingdom? Today we are talking about rides that never happened. Fire Mountain was a lot of things, right? I mean, like Disney Mountains, you've heard of them. Fire Mountain was going to be a roller coaster. It was an attraction that was intended to debut, and I believe it was going to be uh, the, the spot where 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was actually located. The problem was with 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea unexpectedly closing in the mid 90s, they didn't know what to do with all that space. That was a big attraction. That was an opening day attraction. It had a lot of room, and people were like, well, what are we gonna put here? It was originally supposed to be based on, oh my gosh, my sweatpants. <laughs> Pretend I'm dressed. Okay, it was designed as a roller coaster that would take you into an actual volcano, Volcania. Which is the hideout of one of the characters from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I mean, first of all, Fire Mountain. It sounds pretty wild already. Like space. That represents like space and wind. Okay, splash. That represents water. Ooh. Big Thunder? Which represents what? The Earth? That's a lot. Fire? With all your mountains combined, I am Captain Planet Mountain. Whoa. Cool it, buckaroo. So this roller coaster was gonna have two different ride systems. It was gonna be on a regular roller coaster track. Feel like you were on a track, and then you would get rocketed out of the volcano, and you would feel like you were hanging all of a sudden, like you had flown out into the sky. There were two sets of Imagineers. Michael Eisner was like, hey, you guys, figure out something to go here. And so team A came up with Fire Mountain and team B came up with Villains Mountain, which was going to be a Disney dark ride coaster where all the villains were trying to overtake you. And that would have been really cool, but Fire Mountain originally didn't have any characters associated with it. But then as the idea progressed, they thought about tying it to Atlantis. The Lost empire and it is an incredible film following the journey of milo thatch who was not supportive in this field of academics attempting to uncover an ancient land and civilization but, but before that movie was released they were like well this movie's obviously going to be a banger right right because it should have been and then they released they were like when we release it we fire mountain based on atlantis because this movie's obviously going to be a banger Michael Eisner's all about that synergy, you know? He's like, circle back on this idea for my last email. And the film came out and it was the opposite of a blockbuster. What was I saying? Great movie, big fan of the movie. So Atlantis just wasn't very popular, which of course had an effect on Disney's desire and financial security feelings about building a ride based on Atlantis. I do wish Fire Mountain happened. I think it would have been a really important ride for Magic Kingdom. And I think it sounds even more intense than Tron sounds. So it's, I think it would have been probably the most intense roller coaster or thrill ride in general in Walt Disney World. 100% I would rather have Tron. And the reason for that is that nine, none of these movies or stories are ones that I necessarily have seen or care about. I'd rather have Bald Mountain. I'd rather have the villains themed one that was supposed to also exist around this time. How about that? I'd rather have a villain dark ride. Where's that? People would love it. So if you want to get on this ride, board yourself a plane ticket to Tokyo. Get yourself to Tokyo Disney Sea. Get some of those cute popcorn buckets and some chocolate popcorn, and then go get on this ride. And tell me how it is. Or if you have been on it, you've been on a version of this ride, mention it in the comments. Like, tell us if you like it, and tell us if you think it would have been a good fit for Magic Kingdom. Time racers. I'm so excited to talk about this one. Time racers. Time racers, we're racing the time. We're gonna get into time racers real quick, but I gotta let you know, as an Epcot stan and an Epcot fan, I am not with this attraction. I am anti-time racers. I am against it most strongly. Is a roller coaster in Spaceship Earth. Then would we have to call it? Like I call the Obviously, I call that building the park icon Spaceship Earth because that's what it is. But I have to call that Time Racers? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I thought that this was like urban legend, but they really 
got close to doing this. Like, oh yeah, they've got new projections on time racers. Are you excited to see them? They were going to take away the Phoenicians? From what I can understand, because very little is known about what time racers would have been. Steel track coaster inside of Spaceship Earth? Yeah, that's great, Kyle. Well, Kyle, guess what? We have no space. You literally have one drop and that's it. It's, it's just a, it's an upside down bell curve. That's your roller coaster. From what I can understand, it sounds like it would have been a very projection heavy roller coaster where riders would go through different scenes of history before kind of like rocketing off into the future. There's the library buried. There's the sleeping monk. There's Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel. There's sassy scientist lady, but like. They were gonna take away my Afro queen scientist? But they obviously didn't because we still have Spaceship Earth, like a grand and miraculous spaceship. I have to say, I actually like this idea. I just think it would be so awesome to be able to ride a roller coaster inside Spaceship Earth. In the 90s, there was a big secret project called Project Gemini. Y'all Geminis always messing something up. Y'all can't just leave well enough alone. It's always the Geminis. Anyway. And it was overhauling Future World, and they were gonna call it Discovery World, which like, spoiler alert, they got World Discovery last year, so I guess they did it 20 years late. It didn't happen, so there's no reason for me to be all angry, but it could have happened, y'all. We were close to getting rid of dang Judy Dench. The reason it didn't happen is because of it's it's the same reason a lot of things don't happen at Disney, and that is ultimately the price tag. It was estimated to be somewhere around five hundred million dollars, which is a lot of cash, a lot of a lot of cheddar. You know what I mean? I think it could have been really cool that it happened, but now that we have the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Rewind, I have a feeling that that's what they're going for. I cannot wait for Cosmic Rewind. You know it's gonna have an awesome soundtrack. You know the coaster is gonna be cool. The ride vehicle is gonna be cool. I'm would much rather have Cosmic Rewind. I would love to like go to that alter alternate universe and ride that, but still be able to keep Spaceship Earth. Can I do that? That'd be neat. Hey, 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 look. Look at the guy in the goofy mask. That's not a mask. <laughs> Sorry, lady. So the Great Muppet movie ride is the greatest thing that never existed. And of anything on the list, this makes me the most sad that it didn't come true. It's exactly what it sounds like. The Great Muppet Movie Ride was supposed to be a spoof on the Great Movie Ride in Hollywood Studios. Well, MGM. That was the same ride, except Muppets. Because what, <laughs> you know what everything needs? Muppets. It was gonna be the Muppets in famous movie scenes and kind of taking you on a behind the scenes tour of how movies are made, but with the Muppets and they'd be like doing it all wrong. Like disaster would strike wherever they went. And it sounds so funny and so perfect. And the fact that there's not a Muppets ride, I want this so bad. This is insane. They actually were gonna do this. There was gonna be the great movie ride and then 500 yards away from it, there was gonna be the great Muppet movie ride. What I do know for sure is that Statler and Waldorf were supposed to be in the ride vehicle with you commenting on everything going on. Why was the great Muppet movie ride taken from me? Why doesn't Disney want me to feel joy? Back where Muppet Vision 3D is, they were gonna do a whole Muppet land. Okay, a whole Muppet land. Can you imagine it? It would be amazing. Who doesn't want a land full of Muppets, right? Who doesn't want to be walking down the street and just happen upon Gonzo in a cannon? I don't want to do it. It was meant to complement Muppet Vision 3D and Obviously, like the Muppet Square, the Muppet's Courtyard still exists. There's just not a lot going on there. I feel like it still happen, y'all. I feel like they could still do that. And if they were smart, they would. Disney is constantly crushing my Muppet dreams. We've talked on RTT before about the Muppet restaurant that was supposed to go in Pizza Rizzo that was going to be gone to something, something Pizza Pandemonium, where the animatronic rats were gonna bring the pizza to your table. Sadly, I think it didn't happen because 
the genius Jim Henson passed away. He died in the middle of negotiations with Michael Eisner and the Walt Disney Company. So when that like deal broke, all these big Muppety plans didn't get to come to fruition either. I would love to see this ride. Absolutely. I mean, I think there's like cast parking lot back there. So like, why not? Yes. I would definitely trade the Gonzo bathrooms and the Pizza Rizzo for the Great Muppet movie ride. That would be really fun. Hey, hey Kermit! Look! What? Huh? Bean, what are you doing out there? Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. The excavator was going to be a roller coaster similar to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad level in Animal Kingdom in Dinoland, USA. The second thrill ride for that area after the dinosaur ride. So Dinoland USA was originally going to be kind of a hot spot for thrill rides, but that didn't end up happening. So it's supposed to be a wooden roller coaster that was supposed to be part of an extension of the Boneyard Playground. And it was supposed to have more of that theme of like, you know, you're doing paleontology, you're in the dirt, but you're on a roller coaster now. And it's an excavator. It looks like a dinosaur. But you're supposed to like zoom through like rib cages of dinosaur bones and stuff. Those are really cool. Excavator didn't happen mostly once again because of cash monies. The cost of opening a park with live animals was more than they expected. I think honestly, giving up something like the excavator is a very, very good thing. If you look at it from the perspective of that's what's going to ensure that the animals are taken care of, which is the main point of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Instead of the excavator, we got Primeval World, which is sort of like Goofy Sky School over in Disney's California Adventure, which Molly loves. I think maybe a little bit ironically. I'm not really sure I'm scared to honestly ask because I don't want to offend her. I love Primeval World. But Did you love it the way that you love the Fast and the Furious ride in Universal Studios? But it's from a like nostalgia place for me because I worked there. And I do think it was often underrated and over criticized because it was way more fun than you thought it was gonna be when you actually wrote it. I wouldn't say I miss it, <laughs> necessarily. Primeval World was better than taking it away. Now that it's gone, you're just like, that would be fun to have one more ride with a short wait right there. I think Primeval World served a purpose, but I also know that there are better attractions that can be put there. We have all this space in Dinoland. Dinoland has such a cool history. Dinoland has such cool detail and backstory. What awesome new attraction can we put in there now? Maybe the excavator, I don't know. But like, I hope Dinoland's gonna get something awesome in that space. I don't know if it needs to be a thrill ride because you've got Expedition Everest now, which is kind of filling that void in that park, but like, something's gotta go there. Cause let's be honest, we love Dinosaur. Indiana Jones does it better in Disneyland. I'm sorry. For such a big property as dinosaurs could be, there's not a ton to do something new, it needs something fresh, and I hope they put something amazing in where Primeval was. All bold ideas. These rides are bold ideas, but they didn't happen for certain reasons. They were the product of a time during which things got canceled, things got cut. And it's probably happening now, too, a lot more than we even know. I mean, we know the Mary Poppins ride got cut, but there's probably a lot more behind the scenes that wasn't even announced. If I had to pick one, Fire Mountain in Magic Kingdom. That's definitely the one that I want. I Atlantis has a very special place in my heart and it would have been ni nice to see some IP related to Atlantis and the theme park. Has to be the Great Muppet Movie Ride. That's a genius idea and it's really upsetting that the merger fell apart and meant that we did not get to have this beautiful concept that could have been life-changing for me. You know, Mickey and Minnie finally got a ride after a very, very long time. So now, Kermit needs a ride. Miss Piggy needs a ride. Let's make it happen, people. The world wants a Muppet ride. So why don't we get it? Give it to us. Give us the Muppet ride we demand. Because I could have done that before the camera started off. And I am a nerd, so... Whoa, I... Uh, wow. Amazing. 
Wow, I cannot believe these rides that almost happened. Now go watch us discuss 80s Epcot.